Jordan, tr, apostrophe, officially the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, tr, apostrophe, is an Arab country in the Levant region of Western Asia, on the east bank of the Jordan River. Jordan is bordered by Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Syria, Israel and Palestine West Bank. The Dead Sea is located along its western borders and the country has a coastline on the Red Sea in its extreme southwest. Jordan is strategically located at the crossroads of Asia, Africa and Europe. What is now Jordan has been inhabited by humans since the Paleolithic period. Three stable kingdoms emerged there at the end of the Bronze Age, Ammon, Moab, and Edom. Later rulers include the Nabataean Kingdom, the Roman Empire, and the Ottoman Empire. After the Great Arab Revolt against the Ottomans in 1916 during World War I, the Ottoman Empire was partitioned by Britain and France. The Emirate of Transjordan was established in 1921 by the Hashemite, then Emir, Abdullah I, and the Emirate became a British protectorate. In 1946, Jordan became an independent state officially known as the Hashemite Kingdom of Transjordan, but was renamed in 1949 to the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan after the country captured the West Bank during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War and annexed it until it was lost to Israel in 1967. Jordan renounced its claim to the territory in 1988, and became one of four Arab states to sign a peace treaty with Israel in 1994. From as early as 1948, Jordan has accepted refugees from multiple neighboring countries in conflict, an estimated 2. 1 million Palestinian and 1. 4 million Syrian refugees are present in Jordan as of a 2015 census. While Jordan continues to accept refugees, the recent large influx from Syria placed substantial strain on national resources and infrastructure. Jordan is classified as a country of high human development with an upper middle income economy. The Jordanian economy, one of the smallest economies in the region, is attractive to foreign investors based upon a skilled workforce. Nonetheless, a lack of natural resources, large flow of refugees and regional turmoil have hampered economic growth. While several theories for the origin of the river's name have been proposed, it is most plausible that it derives from the Semitic word Yarad, meaning the descender, reflecting the river's declivity. Much of the area that makes up modern Jordan was historically called Transjordan, meaning across the Jordan, used to denote the lands east of the river. Later, during the Crusades in the beginning of the second millennium, a lordship was established in the area under the name of Alta Jordan. History Ancient Period The oldest evidence of hominid habitation in Jordan dates back at least 200,000 years. Jordan is rich in Paleolithic up to 20,000 years ago remains due to its location within the Levant where expansions of hominids out of Africa converged. Past Lake Shure environments attracted different hominids, and several remains of tools have been found from this period. The transition from hunter-gatherer to establishing populous agricultural villages occurred during the Neolithic period 10,000 to 4,500 BC. Ain Ghazl, one such village located in today's eastern Amman, is one of the largest known prehistoric settlements in the Near East. Dozens of plaster statues of the human form dating to 7250 BC or earlier were uncovered there and they are among the oldest ever found. Other than the usual Chalcolithic 4500 to 3600 BC villages such as Delalit Garsul in the Jordan Valley, a series of circular stone enclosures in the eastern basalt desert whose purpose remains uncertain have baffled archaeologists. Fortified towns and urban centers first emerged in the southern Levant early on in the Bronze Age 3600 to 1200 BC. Wadi Fainan became a regional center for copper extraction, which was exploited on a large scale to produce bronze. Trade and movement of people in the Middle East peaked, spreading and refining civilizations. Ancient Egyptians expanded towards the Levant and controlled both banks of the Jordan River. During the Iron Age 1200-332 BC after the withdrawal of the Egyptians, Transjordan was home to Ammon, Edom and Moab. The Transjordanian kingdoms of Ammon, Edom and Moab were in continuous conflict with the neighboring Hebrew kingdoms of Israel and Judah, centered west of the Jordan River. 
One record of this is the Meshaw steel erected by the Mobite King Meshaw in 840 BC on which he lords himself for the building projects that he initiated in Mob and commemorates his glory and victory against the Israelites. The steel constitutes one of the most important direct accounts of biblical history. Around 700 BC, the kingdoms benefited from trade between Syria and Arabia when the Assyrian Empire increasingly controlled the Levant. Babylonians took over the empire after its disintegration in 627 BC, Roman legions under Pompey conquered much of the Levant in 63 BC, inaugurating a period of Roman rule that lasted four centuries. In 106 AD, Emperor Trajan annexed Nabataean opposed, and rebuilt, the king's highway which became known as the Via Traiana Nova Road. Gerash is one of the best preserved Roman cities in the east. It was even visited by Emperor Hadrian during his journey to Palestine. In 324 AD, the Roman Empire split, and the Eastern Roman Empire later known as the Byzantine Empire continued to control or influence the region until 636 AD. Christianity had become legal within the empire in 313 AD after Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity. Amar Azaz in southern Amman contains at least 16 Byzantine churches. Meanwhile, Petra's importance declined as sea trade routes emerged, and after a 363 earthquake destroyed many structures, it declined further, eventually being abandoned. Islamic era. In 629 AD, during the Battle of Mutter in what is today al karak the Byzantines and their Arab Christian clients, the Ghassanids, staved off an attack by a Muslim Rashidun force that marched northwards towards the Levant from the Hejaz in modern-day Saudi Arabia. The Byzantines however were defeated by the Muslims in 636 AD at the decisive Battle of Yarmouk just north of Transjordan. The Abbasid Caliphate's campaign to take over the Umayyads began in Transjordan. A powerful 749 AD earthquake is thought to have contributed to the Umayyads' defeat to the Abbasids who moved the caliphate's capital from Damascus to Baghdad. The Ayyubids built the Ajlaun castle and rebuilt older castles, to be used as military outposts against the Crusaders. During the Battle of Hat in 1187 near Lake Tiberias just north of Transjordan, the Crusaders lost to Saladin, the founder of the Ayyubid dynasty 1187-1260. Villages in Transjordan under the Ayyubids became important stops for Muslim pilgrims going to Mecca who travelled along the route that connected Syria to the Hejaz. Several of the Ayyubid castles were used and expanded by the Mamluks 1260-1516, who divided Transjordan between the provinces of Karak and Damascus. During the next century Transjordan experienced Mongol attacks. But the Mongols were ultimately repelled by the Mamluks after the Battle of Angel at 1260. In 1516, the Ottoman Caliphate's forces conquered Mamluk territory. Agricultural villages in Transjordan witnessed a period of relative prosperity in the 16th century, but were later abandoned. Transjordan was of marginal importance to the Ottoman authorities. As a result, Ottoman presence was virtually absent and reduced to annual tax collection visits. Only after Ibrahim Pasha's campaign did the Ottoman Empire try to solidify its presence in the Syria Violet, which Transjordan was part of. A series of tax and land reform stands in 1864 brought some prosperity back to agriculture and to abandoned villages. The end of virtually autonomy predictably provoked a backlash in other areas of Transjordan. Muslim Circassians and Chechens, fleeing Russian persecution, sought refuge in the Levant. After having established its administration, conscription and heavy taxation policies by the Ottoman authorities led to revolts in the areas it controlled. Transjordan's tribes in particular revolted during the Shubak 1905 and the Karak revolts 1910 which were brutally suppressed. The revolt reached its climax when Faisal entered Damascus in October 1918, and established an Arab-led military administration in Atu East, later declared as the Arab Kingdom of Syria, both of which Transjordan was part of. During this period, the southernmost region of the country, including Man and Aqaba, was also claimed by the neighboring Kingdom of Hejaz. 
the nascent Hashemite kingdom over Greater Syria was forced to surrender to French troops on 24 July 1920 during the Battle of Maysalun. The French occupied only the northern part of the Syrian kingdom, leaving Transjordan in a period of interregnum. Arab aspirations failed to gain international recognition, due mainly to the secret 1916 sykes picot Agreement, which divided the region into French and British spheres of influence, and the 1917 Balfour Declaration, which promised Palestine to Jews. This was seen by the Hashemites and the Arabs as a betrayal of their previous agreements with the British, including the 1915 McMahon Hussein correspondence, in which the British stated their willingness to recognize the independence of a unified Arab state stretching from Aleppo to Aden under the rule of the Hashemites. The British High Commissioner, Herbert Samuel, traveled to Transjordan on 21 August 1920 to meet with Al Salt's residents. He there declared to a crowd of 600 Transjordanian notables that the British government would aid the establishment of local governments in Transjordan, which is to be kept separate from that of Palestine. The second meeting took place in Umkais on 2 September, where the British government representative Major Fitzroy Somerset received a petition that demanded an independent Arab government in Transjordan to be led by an Arab prince emir, land sale in Transjordan to Jews be stopped as well as the prevention of Jewish immigration there, that Britain establish and fund the national army, and that free trade be maintained between Transjordan and the rest of the region. Abdullah, the second son of Sharif Hussein, arrived from Hejaz by train in Man in southern Transjordan on 21 November 1920 to redeem the great Assyrian kingdom his brother had lost. Transjordan then was in disarray, widely considered to be ungovernable with its dysfunctional local governments. Abdullah gained the trust of Transjordan's tribal leaders before scrambling to convince them of the benefits of an organized government. Abdullah's successes drew the envy of the British, even when it was in their interest. The British reluctantly accepted Abdullah as ruler of Transjordan after having given him a six-month trial. In March 1921, the British decided to add Transjordan to their mandate for Palestine, in which they would implement their Sharifian solution policy without applying the provisions of the mandate dealing with Jewish settlement. On the 11th of April 1921, the Emirate of Transjordan was established with Abdullah as Emir. In September 1922, the Council of the League of Nations recognized Transjordan as a state under the terms of the Transjordan Memorandum. Transjordan remained a British mandate until 1946, but it had been granted a greater level of autonomy than the region west of the Jordan River. Multiple difficulties emerged upon the assumption of power in the region by the Hashemite leadership. In Transjordan, small local rebellions at Ura in 1921 and 1923 were suppressed by the Emir's forces with the help of the British. Wabas from Najd regained strength and repeatedly raided the southern parts of his territory in 1922 to 1924, seriously threatening the Emir's position. The Emir was unable to repel those raids without the aid of the local Bedouin tribes and the British, who maintained a military base with a small rough detachment close to Amman. Post independence. The Treaty of London, signed by the British government and the Emir of Transjordan on the 22nd of March 1946, recognized the independence of Transjordan upon ratification by both countries' parliaments. On the 25th of May 1946, the day that the treaty was ratified by the Transjordan Parliament, Transjordan was raised to the status of a kingdom under the name of the Hashemite Kingdom of Transjordan with Abdullah as its first king. The name was shortened to the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan on 26 April 1949. Jordan became a member of the United Nations on 14 December 1955. On 15 May 1948, as part of the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, Jordan intervened in Palestine together with many other Arab states. Following the war, Jordan controlled the West Bank and on 24 April 1950 Jordan formally annexed these territories after the Jericho Conference. In response, some Arab countries demanded Jordan's expulsion from the Arab League. On 12 June 1950, the Arab League declared that the annexation was a temporary, 
practical measure and that Jordan was holding the territory as a trustee pending a future settlement. King Abdullah was assassinated at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in 1951 by a Palestinian militant, amid rumors he intended to sign a peace treaty with Israel. Till established the country's modern constitution in 1952, Jordan witnessed great political uncertainty in the following period. On 1 March 1956, King Hussein Arabized the command of the army by dismissing a number of senior British officers, an act made to remove remaining foreign influence in the country. In 1958, Jordan and neighboring Hashemite Iraq formed the Arab Federation as a response to the formation of the rival United Arab Republic between Nasser's Egypt and Syria. Jordan signed a military pact with Egypt just before Israel launched a preemptive strike on Egypt to begin the Six Day War in June 1967, where Jordan and Syria joined the war. Despite the fact that the Palestinians had limited involvement against the Israeli forces, the events at Karameh gained wide recognition and acclaim in the Arab world. In 1973, Egypt and Syria waged the Yom Kippur War on Israel, and fighting occurred along the 1967 Jordan River ceasefire line. Abdullah embarked on economic liberalization when he assumed the throne, and his reforms led to an economic boom which continued until 2008. However, during the following years Jordan's economy experienced hardship as it dealt with the effects of the Great Recession and spillover from the Arab Spring. Al-Qaeda under Abu Musab al-Zarqawi's leadership launched coordinated explosions in three hotel lobbies in Amman on 9 November 2005 resulting in 60 deaths and 115 injured. The attack is considered to be a rare event in the country, and Jordan's internal security was dramatically improved afterwards. Abdullah and Jordan are viewed with contempt by Islamic extremists for the country's peace treaty with Israel and its relationship with the West. The Arab Spring were large-scale protests that erupted in the Arab world in 2011, demanding economic and political reforms. Proportional representation was reintroduced to the Jordanian parliament in the 2016 general election, a move which he said would eventually lead to establishing parliamentary governments. Jordan was left largely unscathed from the violence that swept the region despite an influx of one. 4 million Syrian refugees into the natural resources lacking country and the emergence of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL. Major towns in the eastern part of the country are the oasis towns of Azraq and Ruisht, in the west, a highland area of arable land and Mediterranean evergreen forestry drops suddenly into the Jordan Rift Valley. The Royal Society for the Conservation of Nature was set up in 1966 to protect and manage Jordan's natural resources. Climate The climate in Jordan varies greatly. Generally, the further inland from the Mediterranean, there are greater contrasts in temperature and less rainfall. Summers, lasting from May to September, are hot and dry, with temperatures averaging around and sometimes exceeding between July and August. Ecology Over 2,000 plant species have been recorded in Jordan. Many of the flowering plants bloom in the spring after the winter rains and the type of vegetation depends largely on the levels of precipitation. The mountainous regions in the northwest are clothed in forests, while further south and east the vegetation becomes more scrubby and transitions to steppe type vegetation. Forests cover 1.5 million dunams, less than 2% of Jordan, making Jordan among the world's least forested countries, the international average being 15%. Plant species and genera include the Aleppo pine, Sarcopoderium, Salvia dominica. Black iris, Tamarix, Anabasis, Artemisia, Acacia, Mediterranean Cypress and Phoenician Juniper. The mountainous regions in the northwest are clothed in natural forests of pine, deciduous oak, evergreen oak, pistachio and wild olive. Mammal and reptile species include, the long-eared hedgehog, Nubian ibex, wild boar, fallow deer, Arabian wolf, desert monitor, honey badger glass snake, caracal, golden jackal and the roe deer, among others. Bird include the hooded crow, Eurasian jay, lappet-faced vulture, Barbary falcon, hoopoe, pharaoh eagle owl, common cuckoo, 
Tristram's Darling, Palestine Sunbird, Sinai Rose Finch, Lesser Kestrel, House Crow and the White Spectacled Bulbule. Four terrestrial ecor regions lie with Jordan's borders, Syrian xeric grasslands and shrublands, eastern Mediterranean conifer sclerophyllous broadleaf forests, Mesopotamian shrub desert, and Red Sea Nubos Indian tropical desert and semi-desert. Politics and government. Jordan is a unitary state under a constitutional monarchy. Jordan's constitution, adopted in 1952 and amended a number of times since is the legal framework that governs the monarch, government, bicameral legislature and judiciary. The king retains wide executive and legislative powers from the government and parliament. The king exercises his powers through the government that he appoints for a four-year term, which is responsible before the parliament that is made up of two chambers, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The judiciary is independent according to the constitution. The 130 members of the lower house of representatives are elected through party list proportional representation in 23 constituencies for a four-year term. Minimum quotas exist in the house of representatives for women 15 seats. Though they won 20 seats in the 2016 election, Christians 9 seats and Circassians and Chechens 3 seats. Courts are divided into three categories, civil, religious, and special. High administrative courts which hear cases relating to administrative matters, and the Constitutional Court which was set up in 2012 in order to hear cases regarding the constitutionality of laws. Although Islam is the state religion, the Constitution preserves religious and personal freedoms. Religious law only extends to matters of personal status such as divorce and inheritance in religious courts and is partially based on Islamic Sharia law. The special court deals with cases forwarded by the civil one. The capital city of Jordan is Amman, located in north-central Jordan. The current monarch, Abdullah II, ascended to the throne in February 1999 after the death of his father King Hussein. Abdullah reaffirmed Jordan's commitment to the peace treaty with Israel and its relations with the United States. He refocused the government's agenda on economic reform. During his first year, King Abdullah's eldest son, Prince Hussein, is the current Crown Prince of Jordan. The current Prime Minister is Omar Ratzaz, who received his position on 4 June 2018 after his predecessor's austerity measures forced widespread protests. Abdullah had announced his intentions of turning Jordan into a parliamentary system where the largest bloc in parliament forms a government. However, the underdevelopment of political parties in the country has hampered such moves. Jordan has around 50 political parties representing nationalist, leftist, Islamist, and liberal ideologies. Political parties contested a fifth of the seats in the 2016 elections, the remainder belonging to independent politicians, according to Freedom House. Jordan is ranked as the third freest Arab country, and as partly free in the Freedom in the World 2019 report. The 2010 Arab Democracy Index from the Arab Reform Initiative ranked Jordan first in the state of democratic reforms out of 15 Arab countries. Jordan ranked first among the Arab states and 78th globally in the Human Freedom Index in 2015 and ranked 55th out of 175 countries in the Corruption Perceptions Index CPI issued by Transparency International in 2014, where 175th is most corrupt. In the 2016 Press Freedom Index maintained by Reporters Without Borders, Jordan ranked 135th out of 180 countries worldwide and fifth of 19 countries in the Middle East and North Africa region. Jordan's score was 44 on a scale from 0 most free to 105 least free. The report added the Arab Spring and the Syrian conflict have led the authorities to tighten their grip on the media and, in particular, the Internet, despite an outcry from civil society. Jordanian media consists of public and private institutions. Popular Jordanian newspapers include Al Gad and the Jordan Times, Al Momlaka, Roya, and Jordan TV. Some Jordanian TV channels. Internet penetration in Jordan reached 76% in 2015, 
there are concerns that the government will use the COVID-19 pandemic in Jordan to silence dissidents. Largest cities, administrative divisions. The first level subdivision in Jordan is the Muhafaza or Governorate. The governorates are divided into Liwa or districts, which are often further subdivided into Kde or subdistricts. Control for each administrative unit is in a chief town administrative center known as Anaya. Jordan is a key ally of the US and UK and, together with Egypt and the United Arab Emirates, is one of only three Arab nations to have signed peace treaties with Israel, Jordan's direct neighbor. Jordan views an independent Palestinian state with the 1967 borders, as part of the two-state solution and of supreme national interest. The ruling Hashemite dynasty has had custodianship over holy sites in Jerusalem since 1924, a position reinforced in the Israel-Jordan peace treaty. Turmoil in Jerusalem's al aqsa Mosque between Israelis and Palestinians created tensions between Jordan and Israel concerning the former's role in protecting the Muslim and Christian sites in Jerusalem. Jordan is a founding member of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation and of the Arab League. It enjoys advanced status with the European Union and is part of the European Neighborhood Policy ANP, which aims to increase links between the EU and its neighbors. Jordan and Morocco tried to join the Gulf Cooperation Council GCEC in 2011, but the Gulf countries offered a five-year development aid program instead. Military. The first organized army in Jordan was established on the 22nd of October 1920 and was named the Arab Legion. The Legion grew from 150 men in 1920 to 8,000 in 1946. The Royal Jordanian Army, which boasts around 110,000 personnel, is considered to be among the most professional in the region, due to being particularly well trained and organized. Jordan provides extensive training to the security forces of several Arab countries. There are about 50,000 Jordanian troops working with the United Nations in peacekeeping missions across the world. Jordan ranks third internationally in participation in UN peacekeeping missions, with one of the highest levels of peacekeeping troop contributions of all UN member states. Jordan has dispatched several field hospitals to conflict zones and areas affected by natural disasters across the region. In 2014, Jordan joined an aerial bombardment campaign by an international coalition led by the United States against the Islamic State as part of its intervention in the Syrian civil war. In 2015, Jordan participated in the Saudi Arabian-led military intervention in Yemen against the Houthis and forces loyal to former President Ali Abdullah Saleh, who was deposed in the 2011 uprising. Law Enforcement Jordan's law enforcement is under the purview of the Public Security Directorate which includes approximately 50,000 persons and the General Directorate of Gendarmerie, both of which are subordinate to the country's Ministry of Interior. The first police force in the Jordanian state was organized after the fall of the Ottoman Empire on the 11th of April 1921. The number of female police officers is increasing. In the 1970s, it was the first Arab country to include females in its police force. Jordan's law enforcement was ranked 37th in the world and 3rd in the Middle East, in terms of police services performance by the 2016 World Internal Security and Police Index. Economy. Jordan is classified by the World Bank as an upper-middle-income country. However, approximately 14.4% of the population lives below the national poverty line on a long-term basis, the economy, which has a GDP of $39.453 billion, the Jordanian economy is one of the smallest economies in the region and the country's populace suffers from relatively high rates of unemployment and poverty. Net official development assistance to Jordan in 2009 totaled 761 million US dollars. According to the government, approximately two-thirds of this was allocated as grants, of which half was direct budget support. The official currency is the Jordanian dinar, which is pegged to the IMF's special drawing rights SDRs equivalent to an exchange rate of zero.
709 dinar, or approximately 1. $41,044. In 2000, Jordan joined the World Trade Organization and signed the Jordan-United States Free Trade Agreement, thus becoming the first Arab country to establish a free trade agreement with the United States. Jordan enjoys advanced status with the EU, which has facilitated greater access to export to European markets, due to slow domestic growth high energy and food subsidies and a bloated public sector workforce, Jordan usually runs annual budget deficits. Since 2011, the natural gas pipeline in Sinai supplying Jordan from Egypt was attacked 32 times by Islamic State affiliates. Jordan incurred billions of dollars in losses because it had to substitute more expensive heavy fuel oils to generate electricity. In November 2012, the government cut subsidies on fuel, increasing its price. The decision, which was later revoked, caused large-scale protests to break out across the country. Foreign aid covers only a small part of these costs. 63% of the total costs are covered by Jordan. An austerity program was adopted by the government which aims to reduce Jordan's debt-to-GDP ratio to 77% by 2021. The program succeeded in preventing the debt from rising above 95% in 2018. The proportion of well-educated and skilled workers in Jordan is among the highest in the region in sectors such as ICT and industry. Due to a relatively modern educational system, this has attracted large foreign investments to Jordan and has enabled the country to export its workforce to Persian Gulf countries. Flows of remittances to Jordan grew rapidly, particularly during the end of the 1970s and 1980s, and remains an important source of external funding. Remittances from Jordanian expatriates were $3. 8 billion in 2015, a notable rise in the amount of transfers compared to 2014 where remittances reached over $3. 66 billion listing Jordan as fourth largest recipient in the region. Transportation. Jordan is ranked as having the 35th best infrastructure in the world, one of the highest rankings in the developing world. According to the 2010 World Economic Forum's Index of Economic Competitiveness, this high infrastructural development is necessitated by its role as a transit country for goods and services to Palestine and Iraq. Palestinians use Jordan as a transit country due to the Israeli restrictions and Iraqis use Jordan due to the instability in Iraq. According to data from the Jordanian Ministry of Public Works and Housing, the Jordanian road network consisted of, of main roads, of rural roads and of side roads. The Hejaz railway built during the Ottoman Empire which extended from Damascus to Mecca will act as a base for future railway expansion plans. Currently, the railway has little civilian activity, it is primarily used for transporting goods. A national railway project is currently undergoing studies and seeking funding sources. Jordan has three commercial airports, all receiving and dispatching international flights. Two are in Amman and the third is in Aqaba, King Hussein International Airport. Amman Civil Airport serves several regional routes and charter flights while Queen Alia International Airport is the major international airport in Jordan and is the hub for Royal Jordanian Airlines. The flag carrier, Queen Alia International Airport expansion was completed in 2013 with new terminals costing $700 million, to handle over 16 million passengers annually. It is now considered a state-of-the-art airport and was awarded the best airport by region, Middle East for 2014 and 2015 by Airport Service Quality ASQ Survey the world's leading airport passenger satisfaction benchmark program. The port of Aqaba is the only port in Jordan. In 2006, the port was ranked as being the best container terminal in the Middle East by Lloyd's List. The port was chosen due to it being a transit cargo port for other neighboring countries, its location between four countries and three continents being an exclusive gateway for the local market and for the improvements it has recently witnessed. Tourism. The tourism sector is considered a cornerstone of the economy and is a large source of employment, hard currency, and economic growth. In 2010, 
There were 8 million visitors to Jordan, the majority of tourists coming to Jordan are from European and Arab countries. The most recent blow to the tourism sector was caused by the Arab Spring. Jordan experienced a 70% decrease in the number of tourists from 2010 to 2016. Some very well preserved historical cities include Petra and Jerash, the former being Jordan's most popular tourist attraction and an icon of the kingdom. Jordan is part of the Holy Land and has several biblical attractions that attract pilgrimage activities. Biblical sites include Al Magdas, a traditional location for the baptism of Jesus, Mount Nebo, Amar Azaz, Madabal and Mukares. Islamic sites include shrines of the Prophet Muhammad's companions such as Abdallah ibn Rawaga, Zayd ibn Harithu and Mu'd ibn Jabal. Ajlan Castle built by Muslim Ayyubid leader Saladin in the 12th century and during his wars with the Crusaders, is also a popular tourist attraction. Modern entertainment, recreation and souks in urban areas, mostly in Amman, also attract tourists. Recently, the nightlife in Amman. Akaba and Derbid has started to emerge and the number of bars, discos and nightclubs is on the rise. Alcohol is widely available in tourist restaurants, liquor stores and even some supermarkets. Jordan has been a medical tourism destination in the Middle East since the 1970s. A study conducted by Jordan's Private Hospitals Association found that 250,000 patients from 102 countries received treatment in Jordan in 2010, compared to 190,000 in 2007, bringing over $1 billion in revenue. Jordan is the region's top medical tourism destination, as rated by the World Bank, and fifth in the world overall. The majority of patients come from Yemen, Libya and Syria due to the ongoing civil wars in those countries. Jordanian doctors and medical staff have gained experience in dealing with war patients through years of receiving such cases from various conflict zones in the region. Jordan also is a hub for natural treatment methods in both Man Hot Springs and the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is often described as a natural spa. It contains 10 times more salt than the average ocean, which makes it impossible to sink in. The high salt concentration of the Dead Sea has been proven therapeutic for many skin diseases. The uniqueness of this lake attracts several Jordanian and foreign vacationers, which boosted investments in the hotel sector in the area. The Jordan Trail, a hiking trail stretching the entire country from north to south, Crossing several of Jordan's attractions was established in 2015. Natural Resources Jordan is among the most water-scarce nations on Earth. At 97 cubic meters of water per person per year, it is considered to face absolute water scarcity according to the Falkenmark classification. Scarce resources to begin with have been aggravated by the massive influx of Syrian refugees into Jordan many of whom face issues of access to clean water due to living in informal settlements see immigrants and refugees below. Jordan shares both of its two main surface water resources, the Jordan and Yarmouk rivers, with neighboring countries, adding complexity to water allocation decisions. The Jewa Dam in northeastern Jordan, which dates back to the 4th millennium BC, is the world's oldest dam. The Dead Sea is receding at an alarming rate. Multiple canals and pipelines were proposed to reduce its recession, which had begun causing sinkholes. The Red Sea Dead Sea Water Conveyance Project, carried out by Jordan, will provide water to the country and to Israel and Palestine, while the brine will be carried to the Dead Sea to help stabilize its levels. The first phase of the project is scheduled to begin in 2019 and to be completed in 2021. Natural gas was discovered in Jordan in 1987, however, the estimated size of the reserve discovered was about 230 billion cubic feet, a minuscule quantity compared with its oil-rich neighbors, the Risha field in the eastern desert beside the Iraqi border, produces nearly 35 million cubic feet of gas a day, which is sent to a nearby power plant to generate a small amount of Jordan's electricity needs. This led to a reliance on importing oil to generate almost all of its electricity. Regional instability over the decades halted oil and gas supply to the kingdom from various sources, 
making it incur billions of dollars in losses. Jordan built a liquefied natural gas port in Aqaba in 2012 to temporarily substitute the supply, while formulating a strategy to rationalize energy consumption and to diversify its energy sources. Jordan receives 330 days of sunshine per year, and wind speeds reach over 7 meters per second in the mountainous areas so renewables proved a promising sector. King Abdullah inaugurated large-scale renewable energy projects in the 2010s including, the 117 megawatts Tafla wind farm, the 53 megawatts Shamsman and the 103 megawatts Kura solar power plants, with several more projects planned. By early 2019, it was reported that more than 1,090 megawatts of renewable energy projects had been completed, contributing to 8% of Jordan's electricity up from 3% in 2011, while 92% was generated from gas. After having initially set the percentage of renewable energy Jordan aimed to generate by 2020 at 10%, the government announced in 2018 that it sought to beat that figure and aim for 20%. Jordan has the fifth largest oil shale reserves in the world, which could be commercially exploited in the central and northwestern regions of the country. Official figures estimate the kingdom's oil shale reserves at more than 70 billion tons. The extraction of oil shale had been delayed a couple of years due to technological difficulties and the relatively higher costs. The government overcame the difficulties and in 2017 laid the groundbreaking for the Atarat power plant, a $2.2 2 billion oil shale dependent power plant that is expected to generate 470 megawatts after it is completed in 2020. Jordan also aims to benefit from its large uranium reserves by tapping nuclear energy. The original plan involved constructing two 1,000 megawatts reactors but has been scrapped due to financial constraints. Currently, the country's Atomic Energy Commission is considering building small modular reactors instead, whose capacities hover below 500 megawatts and can provide new water sources through desalination. In 2018, the Commission announced that Jordan was in talks with multiple companies to build the country's first commercial nuclear plant, a helium-cooled reactor that is scheduled for completion by 2025. Phosphat mines in the south have made Jordan one of the largest producers and exporters of the mineral in the world. Industry Jordan's well-developed industrial sector, which includes mining, manufacturing, construction, and power, accounted for approximately 26% of the GDP in 2004 including manufacturing, 16, 2%, construction, 4, 6%, and mining, 3, 1%. More than 21% of Jordan's labor force was employed in industry in 2002. In 2014, industry accounted for 6% of the GDP. The main industrial products are potash, phosphates, cement, clothes, and fertilizers. The most promising segment of this sector is construction. Betaru Engineering Industries Company, which is considered to be one of the main pillars of Jordanian industry, has gained international recognition with its air conditioning units reaching NASA. Jordan is now considered to be a leading pharmaceuticals manufacturer in the MENA region led by Jordanian pharmaceutical company Hikma. Jordan's military industry thrived after the King Abdullah Design and Development Bureau CADB Defense Company was established by King Abdullah II in 1999, to provide an indigenous capability for the supply of scientific and technical services to the Jordanian armed forces and to become a global hub in security research and development. It manufactures all types of military products, many of which are presented at the biannually held International Military Exhibition SOFEX. In 2015, CADB exported $72 million worth of industries to over 42 countries. Science and Technology Science and technology is the country's fastest developing economic sector. This growth is occurring across multiple industries, including information and communications technology ICT and nuclear technology, 
Jordan contributes 75% of the Arabic content on the internet, nuclear science and technology is also expanding, the Jordan Research and Training Reactor, which began working in 2016, is a 5 megawatts training reactor located at the Jordan University of Science and Technology in Aramtha. Jordan was also selected as the location for the synchrotron light for experimental science and applications in the Middle East Sesame facility, supported by UNESCO and CERN. The population of Amman was 65,754 in 1946, but exceeded 4 million by 2015. Arabs make up about 98% of the population, the remaining 2% consist largely of peoples from the Caucasus including Circassians, Armenians, and Chechens, along with smaller minority groups, following the capture of the West Bank by Israel in 1967, Jordan revoked the citizenship of thousands of Palestinians to thwart any attempt to permanently resettle from the West Bank to Jordan. West Bank Palestinians with family in Jordan or Jordanian citizenship were issued yellow cards guaranteeing them all the rights of Jordanian citizenship if requested. Up to 1 million Iraqis moved to Jordan following the Iraq War in 2003, and most of them have returned. In 2015, their number in Jordan was 130,911. Many Iraqi Christians are Syrians. Chaldeans however settled temporarily or permanently in Jordan. Immigrants also include 15,000 Lebanese who arrived following the 2006 Lebanon War. Since 2010, over 1.4 million Syrian refugees have fled to Jordan to escape the violence in Syria. Kurds number some 30,000, and like the Assyrians, many are refugees from Iraq, Iran and Turkey descendants of Armenians that sought refuge in the Levant during the 1915 Armenian Genocide number approximately 5,000 persons, mainly residing in Amman. A small number of ethnic Mandeans also reside in Jordan, again mainly refugees from Iraq. Around 12,000 Iraqi Christians have sought refuge in Jordan after the Islamic State took the city of Mosul in 2014. Several thousand Libyans, Yemenis and Sudanese have also sought asylum in Jordan to escape instability and violence in their respective countries. Thousands of foreign women, mostly from the Middle East and Eastern Europe, work in nightclubs, hotels and bars across the kingdom. American and European expatriate communities are concentrated in the capital, as the city is home to many international organizations and diplomatic missions. There are also a small number of Ahmadi Muslims and some Shiites, many Shia are Iraqi and Lebanese refugees, Muslims who convert to another religion as well as missionaries from other religions face societal and legal discrimination, Jordan contains some of the oldest Christian communities in the world, dating as early as the first century and after the crucifixion of Jesus, Christians today make up about 4% of the population, Jordanian Christians number around 250,000 all of whom are Arabic-speaking, according to a 2014 estimate by the Orthodox Church, though the study excluded minority Christian groups and the thousands of Western, Iraqi and Syrian Christians residing in Jordan. Christians are exceptionally well integrated in the Jordanian society and enjoy a high level of freedom. Christians traditionally occupy two cabinet posts, and are reserved nine seats out of the 130 in the parliament. The highest political position reached by a Christian is the Deputy Prime Minister, currently held by Raja Mu Asha. Christians are also influential in the media. Smaller religious minorities include Druze, Bahas and Mandines. Most Jordanian Druze live in the eastern oasis town of Azraq, some villages on the Syrian border, and the city of Zarqa, while most Jordanian Bahas live in the village of Adasaya bordering the Jordan Valley. It is estimated that 1,400 Mandines live in Amman. They came from Iraq after the 2003 invasion fleeing persecution. Languages The official language is modern standard Arabic, a literary language taught in the schools. Most Jordanians natively speak one of the non-standard Arabic dialects known as Jordanian Arabic. Jordanian Sign Language is the language of the deaf community. English 
though without official status, is widely spoken throughout the country and is the de facto language of commerce and banking, as well as a co official status in the education sector. Almost all university level classes are held in English, and almost all public schools teach English along with standard Arabic. French is offered as an elective in many schools, mainly in the private sector. Culture, art and museums. Many institutions in Jordan aim to increase cultural awareness of Jordanian art and to represent Jordan's artistic movements in fields such as paintings, sculpture, graffiti and photography. The art scene has been developing in the past few years and Jordan has been a haven for artists from surrounding countries. In January 2016, for the first time ever, a Jordanian film called Theb was nominated for the Academy Awards for Best Foreign Language Film. The largest museum in Jordan is the Jordan Museum. It contains much of the valuable archaeological findings in the country, including some of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Neolithic limestone statues of Ain Ghazl and a copy of the Meshor Steel. Most museums in Jordan are located in Amman including the Children's Museum Jordan, the Martyrs Memorial and Museum and the Royal Automobile Museum. Museums outside Amman include the Akabal Archaeological Museum. Music in Jordan is now developing with a lot of new bands and artists, who are now popular in the Middle East. Artists such as Omar Alabdlat, Tony Katan. Diana Karazan and Hani Metwasi have increased the popularity of Jordanian music. Pianist and composer Zaid Durrani has gained wide international popularity. There is also an increasing growth of alternative Arabic rock bands, who are dominating the scene in the Arab world, including, Elmer Abba III, Otto Strad, Jidal, Akers Afhir and Aziz Maruka. Jordan unveiled its first underwater military museum off the coast of Aqaba. Several military vehicles, including tanks, troop carriers and a helicopter are in the museum. Literature. Several Jordanian writers and poets have gained fame in the Arab world including Mustafa Wabi Talarar, Taysi Spool, Nade Hutter, Fadi Zagmat and others. Sports. While both team and individual sports are widely played in Jordan. The kingdom has enjoyed its biggest international achievements in taekwondo. The highlight came at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games when Ahmad Abagosh won Jordan's first ever medal of any color at the Games by taking gold in the minus 67 kilograms weight. Medals have continued to be won at world and Asian level in the sport since to establish taekwondo as the kingdom's favorite sport alongside football. Football is the most popular sport in Jordan. The national football team came within a playoff of reaching the 2014 World Cup in Brazil when they lost a two-legged playoff against Uruguay. They previously reached the quarter-finals of the Asian Cup in 2004 and 2011. Jordan has a strong policy for inclusive sport and invests heavily in encouraging girls and women to participate in all sports. The women's football team gaining reputation, and in March 2016 ranked 58th in the world. In 2016, Jordan hosted the FIFA U-17 Women's World Cup, with 16 teams representing six continents. The tournament was held in four stadiums in the three Jordanian cities of Amman, Zaka and Erbid. It was the first women's sports tournament in the Middle East. Basketball is another sport that Jordan continues to punch above its weight in, having qualified to the FIBA 2010 World Basketball Cup and more recently reaching the 2019 World Cup in China. Jordan came within a point of reaching the 2012 Olympics after losing the final of the 2010 Asian Cup to China by the narrowest of margins, 70-69, and settling for silver instead. Jordan's national basketball team is participating in various international and Middle Eastern tournaments. Local basketball teams include, Al-Orthodoxy Club, Al-Riyadi, Zain, al Hussein, and Al Jazeera, Boxing. Karate, kickboxing, Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu are also popular, less common sports are gaining popularity, rugby is increasing in popularity, a rugby union is recognized by the Jordan Olympic Committee which supervises three national teams, although cycling is not widespread in Jordan, 
the sport is developing as a lifestyle and a new way to travel especially among the youth. In 2014, the NGO Make Life Skate Life completed construction of the Seven Hills Skate Park, the first skate park in the country located in downtown Amman. Cuisine. As the eighth largest producer of olives in the world, olive oil is the main cooking oil in Jordan. A common appetizer is hummus, which is a puree of chickpeas blended with tahini, 